welcome to Delivering Miracles, a podcast to teach women like you tips and strategies on how you can have a safer pregnancy so you can bring home a healthy baby. I'm your host and your high-risk pregnancy expert, Parijat Deshpande. I can't wait to chat with you. Have you ever felt angry? Like really, really angry, like your face gets red or your heart starts racing. You maybe notice your fists are clenched up. You're breathing faster. Your tears are burning the back of your eyes. That's one that's huge for me when I get really, really angry. And you start having these thoughts of like, oh, that person, oh, I can't, or more adult versions of (laughs) those thoughts. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe it's when you have a reminder of how easy other people have it to get pregnant. Or maybe it's when you see a healthy newborn when yours is in the NICU. Or maybe it's when you see women who are pregnant and jogging when you're stuck on bed rest at home. Or maybe it's just a Facebook ad that pops up as you're scrolling on social media or something. But you know that feeling, that anger that just like lights you up and there's just like this fire inside, right? I know you felt it because I also know what happens afterwards, which is it doesn't feel good. Nobody wants to feel that angry all the time. And so you try to go, no, 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 I'm not feeling that way. No, stop, stop. I'm not angry. Calm down. Take a few deep breaths. Everything's okay. Stop, right? But you can't shake the thought or you can't shake that feeling. Your heart's still racing or your mind is still going, right? And you can't make that go away. And you try to make it go away and it's not going away, which feels awful still. So then you start judging yourself. I can't believe I'm feeling this way. I'm a terrible person for thinking this way. I can't believe that I can't be happy for my friend. I can't believe that this is how I'm feeling. This is totally not how I wanted to feel. Who am I? Who have I become? I can't believe this. I'm a terrible person. I sh- I don't deserve friendships or whatever. You tell yourself. You get mad at so you're so you're angry and then you get mad at yourself for being angry, which also feels really really awful right? You you felt this way. Something has triggered off that anger. And I'm not talking about like a fight with your partner or something. I'm talking about a trigger, something that happened that just made your blood boil. Maybe it's somebody complaining about how hard it is when you're 37 weeks pregnant and how you just can't wait for this baby to come. And you feel like, seriously, stop complaining. I would have given anything to make it to 37 weeks right? Little triggers like that. New parents complaining about not getting enough sleep when you're shooting yourself up with another round of menopure, right? Or you're waiting for another egg retrieval going, seriously, shut up. I would do anything to not sleep if that meant I'd have a baby. Something like that, right? You know what I'm talking about. Now, what happens then when you feel that way after you've already gotten what you wanted? You're already pregnant. You've got a baby at home. You've got a healthy baby at home. You've got all the children that you ever dreamt of. Or you've got one and you're working on the rest. But you've got what you wanted. You've got the baby in your belly, in your arms. And you still feel angry. You still see that woman jogging during her pregnancy and you still feel that angry anger. You see that couple complaining about their children and you still feel that anger. You see that pregnant woman complaining about how hard it is to carry a baby in her body and you still feel that anger. And then you feel completely insane because why am I angry When I got what I wanted, I'm pregnant. My baby's coming. My baby's already here. It's in my arms right now. It's biting my cheek. It's chewing my hair. It's pulling my hair out. My kid's right here or my kid's in me. Why am I still angry? And the judgment that comes from that, that's really awful. 
It makes you feel so awful, doesn't it? That's what I want to talk to you about today, about how that anger, the goal is not to get rid of that anger. That's not the answer. Because that anger that you're feeling, even though you've got everything you wanted, you're pregnant, you've got your baby at home, that anger is a mask for grief. And I want to show you today how to channel that anger to help you identify exactly what you're grieving so you can allow yourself to mourn that loss. The idea for this particular episode came several days ago when I got an email from a woman named Josie. And it really hit home because what she said is similar to some of the things that I've been hearing lately from my clients and my former clients who are coming back as clients and just people who are emailing me and messaging me anyway, this idea of anger keeps coming up. And I I just, I got to say, I'm so glad that women are talking about this because there's sometimes a sense of like, well, I can't tell people I'm angry. Come on. There's so much judgment around it. And so I'm really glad that this is coming up and this theme is coming up because it allows us to talk about this emotion And this experience that so many of us feel, we can actually put some words to it and we can actually discuss it, talk about what's happening here and what do we do about it? Because obviously ignoring it and pushing it away is not working. Would have worked by now if it did, right? So I just thought it was a really, once I got Josie's email, I'm going to read it to you in a second. I just thought it was a really great opportunity for us to have this conversation because so many of us are feeling this anger in silence. We're we're feeling it in in private. We're we're feeling that rage. We're feeling that that burning feeling in our bodies, the heart's racing. Like I said earlier, it's for me, it's I can feel that anger's coming because my tears literally burn the back of my eyeballs. And I know that this is what it is. It's not the same as when I'm angry with my husband. (laughs) It's a very different kind of anger. This one's deeper. This one's bigger. And this one needs more attention. So let me tell you what Josie wrote, and then I'm going to talk to you all and and to you, Josie, about what to do, because this is a really great opportunity to have this conversation and work through this together. Okay, Josie writes, Dear Barija, thank you for your podcast. I binge listened to it over the last couple of weeks. That's awesome, Josie. (laughs) It's such a relief to know that you get how hard it is to go through some of these things. I've been struggling with infertility for five years. We did six rounds of IUI and two rounds of IVF, and I'm finally pregnant with my twins. Congratulations. I'm four months, but I just got a baby shower invitation from a friend, and I just got so angry, which is so stupid because I'm pregnant and there's no reason to be angry about this, but I'm just so angry, and I knew I had to reach out and ask you what you thought and what I can do because I hate feeling so angry, but I can't shake it. I want it to go away. So Josie, first of all, thank you for writing in. And like I said before, I read your note. I'm so glad that you are reaching out about this because you are not alone in feeling this way. And you have really put words to, I think, what a lot of women are going through is it's one thing to feel anger. And then it's another experience to feel anger, even though you got what you wanted. And in the case for Josie, it's she's pregnant with twins, right? After years of infertility that she, quote unquote, should be happy. And instead, she's feeling angry. So Josie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for writing in. And for the rest of you who have messaged me on social media with a similar types of stories. Thank you for doing that as well. So since Josie emailed, we're going to talk about Josie's situation in particular, and then I'll kind of zoom out. And for those of you that are listening, kind of give you some overarching ideas of how to how to navigate this. Okay. The first thing I want to tell you, Josie, and to all of you who are listening, the goal is not to make the anger go away because it's not going to go away. Okay. It's like it's like trying to make, you know, what it's reminding me of is um that episode of Friends when Phoebe is trying to make her smoke alarm stop, right? It's beeping all night long and she won't make it stop. She can't make it stop. Nothing's working. She like beats the crap out of it and nothing, it just, it still doesn't stop beeping. It reminds me of that because the smoke alarm is there, unless it's malfunctioning, it's there to alert you when something's going on, right? And the same thing's happening with anger. Anger is 
and it's I don't want you to think of it as an emotion that you've got to make go away. I want you to think of it as an emotion that's alerting you to something else. Because here's the thing, anger in most people's minds, not everybody's, but most people's minds, anger is a safe emotion. You know, for a lot of us, we don't grow up being taught how to express a lot of different emotions. And I know this even when I worked as a therapist, a lot of the work I used to do, even with adults, was helping them identify different emotions because we're not really taught that anywhere. There's no class for it in school. And it really depends on how open our parents are and how aware they are about all these different emotions, right? So in a lot of families, people grow up with anger being a safe emotion to express, safer than, say, feeling sad or feeling lonely or feeling anxious. Anger is a tolerable emotion. So we get good at expressing anger, right? This is not true in every single family, obviously, but in many families, this is the case. And the reason for that is it feels safe because it's an aggressive emotion. I don't mean that when you feel anger, you act aggressively, but that it helps you feel bigger than your situation, helps you kind of feel like you've got this armor around you, right? That no matter how many daggers and arrows and whatever, these you know balls of fire are being thrown at you, you've got this protection, that anger is going to protect you. That's how anger works for so many of us. But the problem is, Just like with any armor, it acts as a shield, but it's not actually what's happening. You see what I'm saying? The anger helps us just cope. But if you really look at it really deeply, it's giving you a sign. It's pointing at something that's bigger than anger, that's deeper than anger. What it's pointing to is a sensitive spot, or many, and that spot is unresolved grief. And here's the thing, just because you have what you want doesn't make the grief go away. It's not how grief works. And Josie, for you, you reached out and you saw that you saw, you felt this anger come up when you got this baby shower invitation. You would think, a lot of people think, well, you're pregnant now. You're probably going to get a baby shower too. What are you upset about? What's the problem? Why are you being like this? But it makes perfect sense. Being pregnant now does not take away from the heartbreak that you went through for the past five years. It doesn't do it. It doesn't do it. Sure, you're happy now. I'm sure you're thrilled. I'm sure you're so grateful for being pregnant with not just one, but two, and hopefully the pregnancy is going really well for all three of you, but it doesn't take away the heartbreak that you've been through. And the same is true if, for those of you that are listening and have your babies at home already, it doesn't take away from the heartbreak that you've been through to get to this point. Those are two different journeys you've got to be on. And so when this anger comes up, even though you've gotten what you wanted, that's a sign you've got that unresolved grief sitting in your body and your anger is telling you this is where it is. So what do you do about it? What do you do about it? It starts with one thing and one thing only. And that's true for every single one of us, which is to have compassion for yourself and stop judging that you're angry. That's hard, right? That's hard because you're sitting here You've got this baby in your arms. Maybe you're, you know, you're breastfeeding or you're rocking this baby to sleep. You're having this moment that you never thought would happen, right? And you're thinking about all your friends or all the people in the world who may never experience this moment playing with your baby or having your baby kick you inside of you or all these wonderful things that you never thought would happen for you. You're having this moment and you're going, I am a terrible person for not being grateful. That right there is the biggest hurdle between you and being able to work through this anger. That one thing right there. Because when you've got that judgment, it will get in the way of you being able to look any further. 
It's like this giant wall that you cannot see through, you cannot see over, and you cannot go around. So this is a wall you've got to take down first, right? And how do you do that? I, I get this, okay? <laughs> let's, let's be really real here. I get this. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of release to be able to say, I'm not going to punish myself or berate myself, or whatever it is that you're doing, because I'm feeling this way. And the best way to do that is to understand what's happening. You're not angry because you're ungrateful. You're not angry because you hate the world. You're not angry because you're fundamentally changed or fundamentally flawed as a human being. You're angry because there is something deeper that's happened on your journey to where you are at this moment. And that's all it is. That's all it is. This anger, this emotion doesn't define you. You can feel angry right now, even though you've got your picture perfect life or not picture perfect, but it's what you wanted in a lot of different ways. And you can still be angry about it. And that doesn't have to mean anything about who you are as a human being. It's not just doesn't have to, it doesn't. You are more than this. This is just a small part of you, even though it feels really big right now, okay? So you've got to start at that compassion. You've got to start with taking those words out of your head. Notice how you talk about yourself. When you're sitting here right now, you're listening to this and you're thinking, okay, tonight I'm going to allow myself to feel angry. What comes up next? probably a lot of really negative thoughts about yourself, right? You can't do that. You don't deserve to do that. Who are you to do that? You're going to get stuck in this emotion. You're not ever going to be able to let it go. Don't wallow in this stuff. Let it, just let it be. This is not a big deal. Everything's fine now. Sound familiar? Yeah, I've been there. I am there sometimes. (laughs) It's a process, right? Shut those thoughts off. Shut those thoughts off. A great way to do that is I'm a very visual person. So I just close my eyes and I imagine these thoughts coming at me and I like crumple them up as if they're pieces of paper and throw them away. Go, thanks, but I don't need you. That works. Another way to do it is acknowledge them and say, thank you for that. I'm fine and move on, right? Acknowledge them and say, I'm not paying attention to these thoughts, but you've got to start with that compassion and without judging yourself. It's okay to be angry, even though you have everything you've wanted. Josie, for you, it is okay to be angry by seeing that baby shower invitation, even though you're pregnant with twins. It's okay. Why is it okay? Because step two of this is it's not about the anger. The anger is just an arrow. The anger is just a sign. It is a compass pointing you to what is actually happening. So once you've been able to let go of that judgment, and you have to, have to, have to do that first, okay? Once you've been able to let that go, look at what the commonality is between all the times that your anger has shown up. Now, again, I will stop here and tell you, you may not want to do this because you may not want to accept how often this anger has shown up, okay? So if that happens, go back to step one. Show yourself some compassion. I am okay. I am worthy. I am deserving. I am love it. I'm loved. Whatever it is you want to tell yourself, it is okay for me to feel angry this many times, even though I have what I want. Okay. Josie, you mentioned that this baby shower invitation is what triggered your anger. So questions that I would ask myself if I were you are things like, was it always baby shower invitations? right? Is the pattern that it's every time you get a baby shower invitation, this is how you feel? Is it every time you get baby shower invitations that come from people who didn't have to go through fertility treatment? Is it both? Is it neither? What's the theme? What's the commonality here? What's the pattern that's showing up every time you feel anger? And for those of you that are listening, if it's not baby shower invitations, is it something else? Is it pictures on social media? Is it seeing pregnant women engaging in some kind of activity? I'll tell you, for me, after my son came home, 
It was hearing about my friends going to mommy and me classes. My son and I were on lockdown for two and a half years, which meant other than going to medical appointments, we were really not allowed to be around people because it was so critical for him to stay healthy because his lungs would not have been able to handle even a common cold. Every other kid his age would have just, you know, been miserable for a few days and then would have been fine. A cold would have sent him back to the hospital. And I remember like seeing those posts on social media or getting texts or pictures from friends like, oh, we're at this mommy and me yoga class, which was something I really wanted to do. I really wanted to do prenatal yoga. And then I wanted to do mommy and me yoga, neither of which I got a chance to do, right? And that and and, uh, swimming classes was the other one that really got me every time. I can even feel it coming up in my body right now. I can feel like the, the tears starting to burn a little. But it's not anger I feel anymore because I've, I've broken through the anger. I know what's underneath it is that sadness of I missed out. Yes, I had my baby. So yes, I got pregnant. Yes, I stayed pregnant long enough for him to be born alive. And then I had a chance to bring home my 24-weeker right? I did get all of those things, but those moments still, so many years later, there's some grief there still. There's there's some loss. I feel sad that we didn't get to have those moments. Sure, we created more moments. We have so many other memories instead of those, but we all go into this, whether we like it or not, we go into this experience wanting it to be a certain way, wanting to experience certain moments, right? A baby shower is a big one, But there's so many other moments that we really, really like, we really want. And so, again, it starts with being compassionate about yourself, but then look at what the pattern is, right? If you look at my pattern, it was those moments where we got to bond together, which makes a lot of sense because I didn't get to bond with him the way that I wanted to bond with my newborn child. I didn't get to hold him for a little more than three weeks for the first time after he was born. And then I was bonding with him through medical equipment and with nurses and doctors being his primary caretaker for months after his his birth, right? And then our experience in the world outside of the hospital was then confined into our home. So my experience of bonding with him was so different. And then it was around all these medical appointments and all the cares that he needed just to keep him healthy enough to get him bigger and stronger for years, right? And so when you do this, when you look at the pattern, so Josie, going back to your question, is uh, what is the pattern? What is it specifically? Is it baby shower invitations? Is it invitations that come from people who don't have to go through fertility treatment? Is it any kind of celebration that happens around pregnancy? What is that? What is that? And then the next question, which is the key here, is ask yourself, why does that feel bad to me? Now, you might, it might be really obvious. Now, Josie, you didn't explain this in your letter. So I'm just going to fill in the blanks here as an example. This may not be exactly what's going on for you, but I'm just filling in the blanks here. So you might say, okay, yes. For me, the pattern is it's any time I get baby shower invitations because I never knew if I would ever get one and they were so painful for me when I was going through fertility treatment to go celebrate somebody else's pregnancy and I never knew if I would ever get pregnant for so many years, okay? Fine. Why does that feel bad to me? You might answer it as like, well, because they have no idea how hard it is and they have no idea how difficult it can be to have a baby. And they're celebrating stuff and they have no idea that it's actually not that happy for everybody, right? Something like that might be your first answer. That's okay. That's okay. But that answer is still about them. So keep asking yourself the question, why does that feel bad to me until the answer is about you? Well, they don't know how easy it is. Well, why does that feel bad to me? Because they don't, they've never had to inject themselves to try and get pregnant. Well, why does that feel bad to me? Because I've had to do it and I never wanted to. You see how that happened? It's a very simplistic example, but you keep asking yourself that question over and over and over until the answer is about you. Now, your anger, it's an outward emotion, right? You're angry at someone else or something else. So by asking this question over and over and over, you're slowly going to 
run out of reasons why it's about somebody else and it's going to become about you. And once you know that, once you know that, that's when you'll know where the healing needs to begin. That's when you're going to know what sensitive spots have been created because of the journey that you've been on to get to this moment and what spots of those need to still be healed. So Josie, it's not wrong. You're not wrong or bad for feeling angry. And I hope you see now that the anger is not something that you need to just make go away. I know it doesn't feel good, but the real way to make it dissipate is to follow these steps. Start with compassion and stop judging yourself for being angry because I know you are. You wrote about it in your letter. And for those of you that are listening, you're probably doing the same thing, right? So Let go of that judgment and replace it with compassion. It's okay for me to feel angry. It doesn't make me a bad person for feeling that way. And then notice what patterns there are. What is triggering your anger? What's in common with all of those triggers? And then third, this is where it really starts to come together is ask yourself, why does that feel bad to me? And keep asking that until the answer is about you. And once you hit that, that's when you know, where the healing needs to be, okay? For me, it became about this one example that I shared, one of many, many examples that I have of this was about bonding. And so much of that was once I turn it back on me and realize that I'm not angry at other people for going to mommy and me classes, I'm actually really sad I didn't get to bond with my child in that way. And so for me, the healing had to be forgiving myself and really building up that trust and the confidence that even if we didn't get to bond in that particular way, that I was still his mom. I was still the person that could keep him safe, which is huge, right? Because after a preterm delivery, that be- that comes into question for a lot of us. Am I the right person to keep you safe? And so a lot of that healing had to be about, I am still his person, And I can still keep him safe. And we can still have a deep, meaningful relationship, even though the first like almost four months of his life was him in a hospital. And the rest of the time for the next two and a half years was really kind of this artificial world that we'd created to keep him healthy. There's a lot of work there. Once once you turn that in, you hit it and you go, oh, that's what I need to do. It opens it up. It can feel overwhelming. I won't lie. You might sit here and go, well, then what do I do after that? That depends on what it is, right? Sometimes you can handle it on your own, journaling, meditation, things like that can help. Sometimes you need to reach out for professional support. That's really up to you once you uncover what that is. And I want to encourage you that if you do look for professional support, make sure that the person you work with has a gentle approach to resolving that grief. You do not need to have this hurt more than it already hurts. Because I don't believe that's when healing happens. I think it, that's actually when you hurt yourself further. So that's that's kind of how the process goes, right? And it starts with anger. It starts with this really simple, basic emotion that we go, I just want this to go away. But we don't want it to go away. We want to understand it because it's trying to get our attention to pay attention to something. It's pointing at something that needs attention. And when you think of it that way, It becomes more manageable. And then it actually has a chance of long-term going away, which is what you want because you know you're not an angry person. You know you're not a resentful person. You know you're not somebody that can't be happy for other people. It's just right now that anger is pointing at something that you need to look at. And so Josie, for you, that's the baby shower invitation. What is that anger from that invitation showing you? Because it's showing you something and it is showing you something that you absolutely can work through. Your body and your mind will not point at something that you cannot handle. It doesn't work that way. So when these signs come up, take that as a meaning that, okay, my body knows I'm ready to handle it. I've got, I've got the resources to be able to handle it. Maybe I need help to do it. Maybe I don't, but I can do this. I can do this. Josie, I hope that helps you and I hope that answers your question. You're not wrong or bad for feeling angry. And your anger is trying to show you something that can be healed very quickly with the right tools so that you can feel how you want to feel about the baby shower invitation, about your pregnancy, and about all of it. 
it's absolutely possible. Thing is, anger, it's a mask for grief. And when you learn how to channel that anger to help you identify exactly what you're grieving, that's when you're allowed to mourn that loss. That's when you give yourself permission and the ability to mourn that loss. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you can head over to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review so that more and more women can hear about Delivering Miracles and tune in to learn about how to cope with infertility, high-risk pregnancy, and prematurity, and how to get through it all with less anxiety and more confidence and more hope. And I'd also love to stay in touch. So follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Bari Jatdesh. P-A-R-I-J-A-T-D-E-S-H. Come on over and say hi. Let me know that you're there. I would love to hear from you. It's okay to be angry. Keep your eyes open for what that anger is trying to point to, how it's trying to get your attention onto something, and then trust yourself that you are able to look at it, to sit with it, and to handle it. Take it one day, one step at a time. You can do this.